Okay, Fred, meter's running. All safe, going hot. Ready. Okay, Fred, we've got a peak of 166.3, which is really loud at Shooter's Ear. Right, which um, is normal for but, a lot of ARs, especially ARs with a muzzle brake. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put on the signature suppressor I worked with, you know, Wyoming Arms on and talk a little bit about that suppressor before we even put it on the rifle, if you would. Okay, so what we're going to do is it's the five inch titanium. It's got the new coatings on it, the, um, the PVD and the uh, boron nitride. Um, it's it's a super top end suppressor, but it's very small and light. In fact, we never have measured the muzzle brake, but it's going to weigh similar to what your muzzle brake does and, and actually going to then provide suppression. So I think your muzzle brake is going to provide a lot more recoil reduction, but it's going to be louder. The suppressor is going to provide some recoil reduction, but be significantly quieter. So if that's what we're looking for is the decibel readings to see what we're getting. But this is with a titanium Wyoming Arms suppressor. Um, and this is the five squared TI. Five squared um, TI. So check it out. It's basically because it's five inches long. We're talking, it's a little over five ounces, 5.5 ounces, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so barely over five ounces, which is literally the lightest center fire suppressor on the market right now. So that's why we're curious to test mm -hmm. this out. Yep. Okay. Fred's in the gun. We're making sure we're still six inches off the center line right here. Everything feel good, Fred? Yes, sir. I'm gonna reset the meter. I better come around. Meter's running, Fred. Off safe, going hot. Ready. All right, here you go, Fred. So we're at 142 with the suppressor. Man, isn't that something? That's a pretty huge difference. Yes, yeah, so we went from 166 down to 142. Uh huh. Unbelievable. Yeah, so we're we're really close to what OSHA considers hearing safe for employees without hearing protection. But, uh -huh. So this is the kind of stuff that's interesting to me. Now, just so you understand how many decibels certain things are, we're going to get in, and I'm just going to close the action on this Rock River AR. Mm -hmm. That's it. So we're going to do the same thing, the measurement, six inches from shooter's ear. So I'll hop in here, and you tell me when I'm set up. Should be similar, because I'm right yeah. back in the same position. I am on target. And you're right on six inches. Meter's running. All right, I'm going to close the action. 119.8. <laughs> 119 decibels. Just to give you an idea of what things, how loud things are. Just closing my action on that AR, 119 decibels. Let's now, do a couple claps. All right. So let's, I'm going to clap my hands. And, uh, so do it about right about, here, about mm -hmm. the same distance. So again, I'm approximating this, but I'm going to try and do it about six inches. Meters running. 128. I got 128 decibel clap. All right, I'm going to do it again. Ready? Meters running. 126.9. <laughs> Ready? Tell me when you're up. I'm going to try and get a good one. And again, if you double the distance, you quarter the sound. Meters up. 129.6. So I can clap my hands at 129 decibels. Again, to just put that in perspective, you know, as far as sounds that people are hearing, and that's why OSHA, and I think this is interesting, OSHA has designated, right, mm -hmm. that 140 decibels is safe to subject your employees to one time a day. So if you've got somebody working for you, and let's say, you know, you slam a box or you do this, do that, 140 up to 140 decibels they're saying they don't have a claim for hearing damage or hearing loss so osha super you know what i mean conscientious be because they have to be but if they're saying 140 decibels is okay to subject an employee to once a day that really kind of puts it all in perspective i can clap my hand at 129 decibels Closing the gun action was what, 119? Mm -hmm. 119 decibels. And to be honest, when I'm in the field hunting, and, and most people are like this, mm -hmm. I'm not wearing hearing protection. I need to hear an elk bugle. Right. Uh, well, I need absolutely. to hear a turkey yeah. gobble. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna, you know, I've got my call set up out there. Um, I wanna hear a coyote howl back at me. But if I can reduce my hearing damage in the field mm -hmm. by, by, by running suppressor, 
well, then I'm going to do it because realistically, I'm, I'm not running hearing protection. Uh, I do on the range, especially when we're shooting a whole bunch, you mm -hmm. know, like we've been doing this morning. But when I'm out field hunting, you know, I, I'm not wearing hearing suppression. That's just, you know, that's just the truth of it. But we do suggest that you do.